Hello. Got a bit of a pile here today. So I uh, finished work a bit early today, and so I um I decided to look at a few places over uh, other area of the city, uh, kind of uh, further away from where I usually look. There's uh, what is it? about three or four shops, like sometimes calling over there. Uh, two of them, or three of them, had some stuff. One in one particular had some good stuff. Two had some okay stuff. One had nothing. But anyway, you can see it's a pretty decent sized pile here. So I'll go through some of these. First one here, Reality Bites soundtrack. Remember that movie? We got uh, Winona, 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 Winona. How do you pronounce her name? I think it's Winona, isn't it? So we can see her name. Can't see her name on this. Oh, there. <laughs> I was looking down here. The picture's right. Winona, Winona Ryder, Ethan Hawke, and a young Ben Stiller. Uh, so this was uh, a very uh, symbolic movie of the '90s. I've seen this once, but it would have been about. 25 years ago I kind of probably half watched it and probably didn't understand it either but you can see some of the artists on there the Na My Sharona remember that song do, 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 do. that's an, actually an 80s song but um, Juliana Hatfield Indians World Parties all those songs here I don't actually recognize the posies I've heard of Lisa Loeb Stay that's a beautiful song U2 Crowded House Lenny Kravitz Ethan Hawke Dinosaur Jr. So it's a bit of a mix of kind of some 90s alternative stuff uh, and other kind of earlier stuff and the bits and pieces all over the place. But as I've said before, I collect um, soundtracks, specifically 1990s soundtracks. And this is a movie from, I believe it was what, 93? 94? And the reason I say it was symbolic is I guess if you are my age, or older, or maybe even a little bit younger, you probably know what I mean. Is that this car, this in the 1990s, there was this kind of cultural shift towards this certain. Um, uh, now that I've started talking about it, I don't know how to finish it. They use the word kind of like slacker generation, generation X, kind of the movement away, you know, what was before that was because baby boomers were before them, and then it was kind of that was the time of their ascendancy maybe the 1980s uh, sorry the 1990s and the 80s but the 90s more so and maybe this movie tried to show kind of some of the relationships and everyday life type things that they might endure reality bites i remember a girl who loved this movie so much that she recorded the screen with a camcorder <laughs> instead of uh uh Dubbing the tape, however you would have done that. Anyway, um, next up here, we got another soundtrack, Rush. I've never heard of this movie, but apparently it's a uh, original score composed and performed by Eric Clapton. So that's why I got it. To be honest, I'm not actually the biggest Eric Clapton fan. There's a lot of Eric Clapton's music I don't actually like at all. But um, but anyway, I um, I picked this up. This is a movie, it looks like from the late 80s, if I'm guessing. Oh, 92. Okay, a little bit later. And the actors we got here, we got Jason Patrick, Jennifer Jason Lee. Don't hear about her much nowadays, do you? Sam Elliott. Max Perlick. Greg Allman. Greg Allman's in it, okay. Um... Yeah, I have no memory whatsoever of that movie, but it'll be interesting to listen to, uh, at least through once. Another 1990s soundtrack. A Monty Python album, comedy album. I actually used to have another, this is what this one's called, another Mo Monty Python album. I had maybe the first one, which had more of some of the more famous sketches, like the Election Night and the Dead Parrot, and um, what else is on it? That the Philosopher's Song and um, some of those ones, whereas some of these ones I don't recognize as many. But anyway, I like Monty Python's, the old skits and sketches. So we'll have a listen to that.
This is something I've only ever heard by name. Afro, Afro Celt sound system. I remember in the 1990s, I used to hear that growing up. It's kind of like a world music that uh, fusion of African and Celtic music with uh, electronic undertones, which I guess you could probably guess what that would sound like, kind of. See some of the pictures here. You can see kind of like drums and. Um, but I don't think I've ever actually heard them. World music. Um, and I think now they said they changed the name just to Afro Celt. They took away the sound system if they're still going nowadays. This is from, what is it? 99, 1999. So that's a little bit past their, uh, heyday perhaps. I've got a few of these albums, Real World. I've got one by um, Paul, Peter Gabriel, one by an Indian artist. Who is it? But what they are, they're all kind of a uh, certain like, um, like world music. You know, I know Peter Gabriel is not necessarily world music, but he, did, he did, in his later work, he does to bring in world music elements. So um, yeah, Real World in combination with Virgin. So far, all the ones I've shown you have either been $1 or 50 cents. And I haven't really said, but the, the condition of the Monty Python one is perfect. That was brand new almost. See, that's, you know, I talk about the, the plastic sometimes. See that plastic there? That's the new style plastic versus this, the old early 90s, late 80s plastic, which would get a lot cloudier, easier. But that's, it's not just because this one's newer. It's they they definitely dif did use different plastic. At some stage, they made a change, and it's kind of these newer ones retain the sheen or the um, the clarity. Um, hold on one second. There was a fly buzzing around. It drives me absolutely insane. The, the sound of fly buzzing. You know, it's it's all it's getting towards winter here. It's you know kind of mid autumn and. The flies shouldn't be hanging around. I don't know why they're still here. Um, next up, <clears throat> it's kind of two minds me to get this, but it was only a dollar. This is a soundtrack of The Secret. Now, The Secret, a few, few years, well, actually more than a few years, probably about 20 years ago now, 15, 20 years, there was this, um, I think it was at first there's a book called The Secret, and then they made a movie of it. don't know how they made a movie of it because the book wasn't really a story, but... um. So we're featuring living masters of the secret from the groundbreaking, free, groundbreaking feature film. So I just thought, well, I wonder what the soundtrack of that would sound like. I've never actually seen the, the movie. I have flicked through the book and read an account of the book. The secret has traveled through centuries to reach you, featuring the full stereo soundtrack recording from the groundbreaking film. It contains the teachings of many of the greatest teachers on the planet, including Bob Proctor. Oh, yes. Michael Bernard Beckwith and Jack Canfield. Never heard of any of these people. Apparently, they're the greatest teachers on the planet. If you're wondering what the secret is, it's basically uh, the law of attraction, where if you think positive thoughts with gratitude, then the universe will send you those things. So say you want a new car, then think, have the feeling inside you that you already have that car. It's not like not something you want. You already have it, and you feel grateful for having the car, even though you don't actually have the car. And that, uh, like, it will manifest itself in your life. You know, there's that same kind of thing is is common throughout kind of new age uh, spiritual type teachings and uh, and ideas that you hear all the time. Anyway, um, on the same th theme. This one, yeah. I don't know why I got this one now. <laughs> Tao Meditation. I've said before, I kind of collect um, uh, New Age, not New Age, kind of, yeah, New Age. New Age music. Is there, what's another phrase? Am I thinking of the phrase? Yeah, New Age. Uh, from Especially from the 90s. I've talked about that a lot in a few of the other videos, but um, 
And I've got a few of these kind of meditation type C's because sometimes I like the kind of the cheesiness of some of the um, the the songs that they have on these. And I'm not exactly sure what this is. This actually might be a, a guided meditation type thing. It's got a track listing. Whispers from beyond, karma, visions, heavenly delight, realm of enlightenment, reflections of thoughts. It all sounds very nice, doesn't it? $10. This, I remember this. This is from Borders. <coughs> Borders Bookshop, you know, the American chain used to uh, operate in New Zealand. There was a, two or three branches. There was one particular big branch in the center of Auckland City on Queen Street. And it was like four levels. And they had a huge music section. Um, they ended up leaving the market because um, they weren't turning a profit. I don't know, do they, does Borders still exist anywhere? Maybe it's gone. You know, most, A lot of bookstores don't have gone out of business, haven't they? What's next? Should I look at? Oh, here we go. We've got this. Um, <clears throat> this one was... Uh, I got, so there was a couple that were 50 cents. They had a deal, like uh, it was like four for $2 or something. And this is one of them. The new read, this is a, um, what do you call it? A compilation. Now, I did a compilation video the other other week and it was I focused more on rock compilations, 90s rock and kind of early 2000s new metal rock compilations. I have a few of them. Well, this is early 2000s what would you call that garage rock revivalism you know the, the strokes and that kind of thing that came in, uh came and went around the early 2000s so we got here interpol the killers razor light franz ferdinand the libertines the hives kings of leon ryan adams the von bondies the thrills snow patrol keen veils uh modest mouse the ordinary boys the vines yeah 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 secret machines looking through that I actually have most of those songs on the albums. Like I've got the Year Years album, got the Vines album, got the Modest Mouse album, got the Kings of Leon album, got the Hives album, got the Franz Ferdinand album, got the Killers and Interpol albums. The main reason I got this is the Von Bondies, Come On, Come On. The Von Bondies didn't really hit big enough to have their CDs available in secondhand shops or in any shops really. You don't, I haven't seen... I haven't seen or heard near the hide nor hear of them since like 2004, 2005, or maybe even earlier. And I like that song, Come On, Come On. So I thought, I'm probably never going to find the Von Bondi's album, so at least I have a CD that has the song on it. And that's why I picked this up. But the Von Bondi's were a, um, you know, a band of that style, that kind of garage rock, the type bands. And um, Jack White signed them, I think, or had got them a deal. And then something went south between Jack White and the guy, uh, what was his, Jason Stolmeyer or something like that, was the singer of the Von Bondies. And Jack White uh, punched him in the face a few times at a bar. And he got charged with assault, as he should have. Can't be punching people in the face in bars, can you? Or anywhere else. Uh, what else we got? <sighs> This one here, I just picked this up because I like the cover. Well, not even like the cover. I just it's got you know it's kind of stands out a bit, doesn't it? So I, I quickly googled it while I was in the shop, and it actually seemed like it could be okay. They're sitting on this electronic music. I've never heard of them before. Lone. Never heard of RNS Records either. Um, but you know, it's this would have been either a dollar or fifty cents. So I thought I'd give it a try. Haven't listened to it yet, but I will. Um, yeah, I know. I kind of all I remember was it said electronic music. I can't remember beyond that what it said. But whatever the the uh, the little Google uh, description said made me think. Oh yeah, I'll give that a go. So yeah, Lone Galaxy Garden. I guess that's the Galaxy Garden. Naji Tokyo Blue. I picked this up because I like the title, Tokyo Blue. It makes me, that evokes a certain kind of, um, I don't know, feeling, don't you think? Although from reading about it, I think it's just like smooth jazz. Talking, stay, cruise control. I'll be good to you. Um, this is from 1990. I've never actually heard of Naji, but he looks like he's a jazz uh, saxophonist. And um, I don't know, yeah, don't know anything else about this. Like I said, I picked it up because I like 
the title and also I did a quick Google and I saw that it wasn't getting absolutely ter terrible reviews. It kind of had mid-range to mid-high range um, reviews. So I thought I'd pick it up and give it a listen. This, I have no idea what this is. Subterranean Abstract Blues, The Rebirth of Cool 5. Now, I don't know what this is, if it's a compilation or a, some sort of remix album, but we see some of the artists here. We've got Cold Cut, Massive Attack, Ben Harper, Tricky, Porter's Head, Bomb the Bass, Method Man, Beastie Boys. I assume, this is from 1995, okay? So I assume, I don't know, is it a, a, both a compilation and remix? I'm not actually sure. I can't. I couldn't tell in the shop, and I can't. I still can't tell now. I think it is got yeah, because you can see like for example, Karma Com Coma, the Massive Attack song, Porter's Head Experience, Whipping Boy Remix, United Future Airlines Astral Hijack. So yeah, it seems like it's a mixture of some mixes, some non mixes, and a compilation put out by Island Records. I know that says fourth and Broadway, but it's the same colors as Island and it has Island on the CD itself. So I um, don't know if fourth and Broadway is like an imprint on Island. I don't know. But anyway, oh, it's already been 16 minutes. Jeez. Oh, okay, cool. Quickly, All American Rejects. That's the kind of band where I, you hear their name a lot, but I've never actually listened to them much. The only song of theirs that I liked, or, I, or really the only song of theirs I heard was that one, I think it's called Move Along, Move Along, or Come Along, something along. I remember about 2006, I liked that song. Move, is it Move Along? Anyway, this song, this album doesn't have that on because this is from 2009, which was after when that song. So, uh, this case is not properly uh, connected, but this was 50 cents. So I thought 50 cents, I'll give that a try. One giant leap, no idea what this is. We traveled around the world collaborating with the most hap uh, happening musicians, authors, scientists, and figures we could find to explore the unity and the diversity. This looks like some kind of world music type thing. I can see some names I I, uh, I recognize, such as Michael Stipe, Robbie Williams, ugh. Uh, Michael Franti from, uh, was he from Spearhead? Spearhead? Grantley Phillips, he's from, uh, was it Grant, Grantley? No, I think Grantley Buffalo, is that, <laughs> that's a different thing. Uh, Horace Andy, he's, he does vocals with um, Massive Attack sometimes. Anyway, Tamoko, that's probably from New Zealand, I would guess. Uh, that just sounds, that, that's the kind of thing that I just, yeah, would, would take a chance on because that kind of sounds interesting. It could be okay. It could be a load of rubbish, but, um, I think it'd probably be okay. No idea what kind of music it would be though, but probably some kind of world music, electronica type thing, I would guess. Trip hop. The world's most hated band, Nickelback. I have... The first, what's you know, what's the Nickelback out? I don't actually know the name of it. The one that's got all the big songs in it, the one that that broke them. This is how you remind me, or that you know those ones. Well, I don't know if this is their second or third album. Um, it's one that has photograph on it and rock star. Those are the two that I've heard before. I've 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 talked about Nickelback in another video, and it's almost kind of like a, a cliche now how hated they are and yada yada yada. A lot of the music I don't like, but there's some songs of these that I do like. And um, this was two dollars. Got to pay a little bit extra for the quality of Nickelback, apparently. But um, so yeah, they've been sitting in the shop since the 18th of February, though. So seems like most people weren't willing to pay two dollars for Nickelback. It's a little bit beaten up, but the disc I looked in the shop looks fine. No scratches. Bush, speaking of hated bands, I remember when I was growing up, people didn't like Bush either. They felt that Bush were a um, a cheap knockoff of grunge bands. And to be honest, I didn't like 
a lot of their songs, particularly that song Glycerine I didn't like. Um, but I remember this album from 1999 when it was released. And I remember the song uh, Chemicals Between Us. And I like the guitar sound on that song. So anyway, two bucks for that as well. So these ones are a little bit more expensive. Two dollars for this, Explosions in the Sky. And I was quite surprised to find this because this is something more recent. Explosions in the Sky is a kind of band I've heard a lot about. Hear, the, hear their name mentioned often. The Earth is not a cold, dead place. It's quite a cool album title as well, I think. But I've never actually heard them, at least knowingly. So two bucks, I think that's a pretty good bargain for that kind of band, for a kind of more recent artist. And what's this? Thank you. Is this a, what's this? Oh, okay, that's to do with this. Don't actually know what that, maybe something from the record label, Temporary Residence, got some names of some other CDs. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm uh, actually list, interested in listening to that because I've never heard them before. And the last of the $2, so there was, what, three, four $2 CDs and all the rest were $1.50. This is Bon Iver. Now, I have he have heard bits and pieces from Bon Iver. Bon Iver, Bon Iver. Um, and he, they, whatever, it's, a, it's one guy, isn't it? I don't think it's a band. Um, I think, yeah, I've, I've liked some of the stuff I've heard of him, but I've never, I haven't really listened to him concertedly, so... I thought I'd, I'd get this, and uh, and again for two dollars, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good bargain. The case is cracked. It's got some reviews on the front. Four, five stars from Mojo, five stars from Uncut, five stars from the Sunday Times, the Independent. Well, only four stars from Austin Chronicle. Now they mentioned Iron and Wine down here. Iron and Wine. There was also a CD of Iron Wine at the shop that I was at the same two dollars shop. It was a Salvation Army shop. I already have one Iron Wine CD that I bought on a whim a year or two ago, and I found it to be quite boring. So I gave Iron Wine a miss this time. But they say, prettiest Sam Beam's Iron and Wine creations if they were sung by TV on the radio. Hmm. Lastly, Justin Casablanca's Phrases for the Young. I own this. Now, hang on one second. You're now looking at it, you can't actually see, but this is the one I, I've owned for a couple of years. And it's, I got this for about a dollar. This one today is 50 cents. And it's always bothered me how fucking munched on the spine it is. When I look at it, it just bothers me. It looks like it's getting completely like harassed. And so I saw this one today. It was so clean and brighter that I thought, I'm going to put it for 50 cents. I'm going to pick this up and replace this one. Maybe I can sell that, or I doubt it. Who's going to buy that? But anyway, uh, Justin Casablanca is from The Strokes. I particularly love the song on this, 11th Dimension. Really, really good song. Great video as well, if you ever get a chance to see it. So lots of CDs there. Big finds. A lot of shit, but some good stuff as well. Thanks for watching.